Delighted to say I'm joined by Tipperary footballer Connor Sweeney as AIB launched their sponsorship of the 2021 GA All Ireland Senior Football Championship. AIB celebrate the return of summer football and the, rec uh, the reignition of county rivalries nationwide ahead of some of the hashtag toughest games of the year. Connor, how are you getting on? Good, thanks. How are you keeping? Uh, not too bad. Uh, enjoying your football at the moment? Obviously, not the greatest league campaign for Tipperary, but good to be back out anyway. Ah, yeah, it is. Um, always nice to be back out in the field and, and playing competitive games. Although, like you said, they haven't gone too well for us. It's been a diff disappointing league campaign, but that's sport. The highs and lows of sport. So, yeah, we just need to put that to the back of our heads now and prepare for this massive challenge we have around the corner, which is Kerry. So that's where our focus is right now, anyway. Yeah, and uh, we'll get back to reflecting on 2020 and the joys of that. But just to even look at the league this year, um, I saw a couple of the games and, and clips of some of the other ones, the Offaly match, uh, Wicklow and Limerick as well. So getting just one victory out of three there. And then, of course, there was the, the Longford match uh, in Paris Park, the relegation playoff as well. What, what, what do you think was the sort of bottom line in terms of getting relegated down to Division 4 this year after the highs of last year? I think we just we never got going to be quite honest with you things never clicked for us we haven't been playing well just haven't been playing good football throughout the course of the league that's the bottom line um we're down a lot of personnel from last year so if you think back to the all-ireland semi-final you know we had compared to the all-ireland semi-final we've no colin or reardon no dean casey no bill maher no robbie kiley no kevin fahey no mikey quinlivan those are seven, just off the top of my head, starters that we were down for the first three rounds of the league. So that's that's seven major players for us. Now, listen, we still had 15 players in the field like everyone else. So you could say it's an excuse or whatever, but it was definitely a factor. That's one of the factors why things just didn't happen for us. But other than that, it just didn't click. It just hasn't happened for us so far, you know. Like I said, a lot of our play would tend to be kind of lateral and over and back and backwards as opposed to going forward. So, yeah, uh, poor league campaign. We just hadn't performed. You know, we, we bet even when we bet Wicklow in Turles, we still didn't perform for the full match. So we haven't put in a performance worthy of winning matches, really. That's the bottom line. Um, and all the other factors just kind of complement that, you know. So that's something we're looking to, to write for, for two weeks' time is just, put in a performance we just want to be able to perform um, and give a performance that's worthy of competing against a team like Kerry at the moment you know yeah and you look obviously you're a very experienced player at this point and you were there in 2016 getting to the All-Ireland semi-final and that was maybe a couple of steps back before kicking on again last year winning the Munster title so are you sort of armed with that experience before and being able to sort of advise the players look we, we can't afford to take steps back here if we want to kick on as county Oh yeah, I think it's um it's probably something that goes without saying, even like um and even for this year we would have hoped to kind of have drive on, you know, and push on and, and progress from our success last year. And I suppose the goal this year was to be maybe consolidate our place in division three and even maybe push on for, for promotion, but it just didn't happen that way. Um and you know that's that's the last thing we wanted was to go backwards. But listen, we've been here before, um, you know, that's probably been the, the biggest problem with Tipperary football over the years is just consistency. You know, you might have one great year and we always nearly kind of failed to back it up. So it's a problem that's been always there. So um, obviously this year is no different. But yeah, look, it wasn't part of the plan, that's for sure. But listen, we've only ourselves to look at and um, we're the only people that are going to get, get us out of it. But listen, the league has done that now. So uh, we'll worry about Division 4 next year. So we have bigger things to, to look forward to now over the next couple of weeks. And how has Philip Ryan settled in, the former Dublin and St. Bridget's footballer? Yeah, he's settled in really well. He's a good lad, Philip. He's he's playing some good football. You know, he's definitely going to be an addition to us. He's definitely going to make an impact um, over the next couple of years if he decides to stay with us. So, like, yeah, he, he's definitely a good footballer. He has all the attributes um, that you're looking for as an inside forward. You know, he's, he's both feet. He's good movement and he knows where the posts are. But um, yeah, he's a good lad as well behind it all. So he's settled in really well. He's getting on with everyone and he, um, he's good all crack. So yeah, so far, so good. Yeah. Did, did you, does it take long to build up a relationship on the field, you know, sort of understanding how each other plays? Sometimes it does, but with someone like Philip, it doesn't. Um, I don't know, is that just an inside forward thing? I kind of, even straight away, you, you kind of get an idea of how he likes to play and what he likes to do and where he wants the ball and you just it's just practice like okay we haven't had too much time together yet but 
um, you know, you you that def, that'll only get stronger over the next coming months and years, please God. But um, yeah, he's definitely made a good start. So so far, so good. Mm. Connor Bow is another guy guy that's joined the panel this year. He obviously really stood out with the Tipperary under twenty hurlers last year, and like maybe some would have expected him to be down that route this year with Liam Sheedy. But he's he's performed well also. Very well, yeah. <clears throat> he's had a major impact, and he's really he's a great lad as well. He's a fantastic attitude, um, and he's he's first league campaign has gone really well he's probably one of he's probably one of the standout kind of guys that have performed consistently well throughout the league and um you know we haven't taken too much from this league campaign but we've definitely unearthed a couple of players and he's definitely one of them he's still a little bit raw at the moment i would think um you know he's he's new to this obviously to this level and to the game and it's a different ball game than under 20s or, or club football or club hurling it's a massive step up and you know, he's still making mistakes on the field and things like that. But in terms of work rate and honesty and just, you know, talk about going for something, he's just, he's he's 100% in everything he does. And, you know, he, he's getting on the score sheet and he's working really hard. And, yeah, he's he's made a fantastic start to his inter-county career, that's for sure. And I've no doubt it'll only get better with time, you know. Yeah, you couldn't be possibly facing a bigger task than this weekend. The wounded animal carry after last year, and the performance they put up and the huge scoreline against Clare shows that they're in fairly, fairly rude form. Yeah, they're 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 playing some of the best football I've seen them play over the last couple of years. Anyway, that's for sure. Um, and obviously they've, you can just see it in them. Like they have that rootlessness in them at the moment. They've got that bit between their teeth. You know, they're a wounded animal, which is extremely dangerous for anyone who comes up against them this year. You know, obviously exiting the championship early last year probably is extra firepower for them in 2021. Um, but you just look, even though there are, are rivals to a certain degree and we're coming up against them, you'd have to just appreciate how good they are and, and, and how they play football. It's just, it's unbelievable. But look, we'll be looking to tackle them now in a couple of weeks and, and give it our all. And, and like I said earlier on, hopefully we can put in a performance because it's something we haven't been able to do this year. Yeah, and as an inside forward, well, when you watch David Clifford, which I'm sure you do, um, what do you see in him that makes him so special? Um, I think it's his it's his movement. He his movement is unbelievable, um, and he's constantly getting away from lads. And I can tell you for sure now that that is not easy. See, the cameras don't pick up a lot of things, um, especially in the inside forward line with regards to full backs and full forwards. There's a lot of pulling and dragging that goes on from both sides. But his ability to get away from a full back or a corner back, you saw it for his goal in the second half um, last weekend. I was looking at it closely, like the full back had him and he had the strength and the power to push him away and then accelerate away from him. Whereas another lad will just say, Do you know what, I'm held here, I won't bother trying to shake him off and I won't bother making the burst. They were winning the game by 10 or 12 points anyway. There was no need to do it, but his willingness to get away from his man and to create space for himself and to constantly just get on the ball, that's what impresses me most. Obviously, then he's, look, like any good inside forward, he's accurate. He can kick points if you give him space. But his ability to keep going and, and be an option for his teammates, but his teammates are always looking for him as well, which is the other thing that you'd be a little bit envious of at times. Like his brother, anytime his brother gets the ball in the 40, you can see he's looking for David. And they have that kind of telepathy between their half forwards and their full forwards. They know when the ball is coming. They know if they make a run, the boys are playing with their heads up, and they they can deliver good balls. So, yeah, you'd have to be you'd have to be like you'd have to admire their forward line as a whole at the moment. They're just playing really well. Mm, there's probably a few different terms for it, but just watching Dublin and uh, you know the way they scored those goals against Kerry in the league uh, down in Turles. The, the backdoor cut, some people refer to it, where, like, let's say Conor Callaghan goes towards Kieran Kilkenny, but he's just kind of drawing his man with him so he can cut back and get the hand pass over the top yeah. and take his man out of it. I saw Dunny Gall doing it a few times at the weekend, Paddy McBrearty. It was really pronounced the way he did it, too. Is that part of the evolution of, of being an inside forward, too, that type of movement? I think so, yeah. I, th I think kind of it, it can be a difficult place to play at times because... There can be so many bodies around and you, it can be difficult to find space. Um, so you're literally just trying to try anything. But that that actually, that kind of backdoor thing has been around a lot for a long time, actually. And it's, do you know what? It's actually very simplistic. It might actually kind of look a little bit lazy in that you're only making a dart out to go back. But it makes sense because you're actually running towards the goal. 
and you're just asking your outfield players then to put the ball over the top. Um, but it's 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 to have those players in the field who can see that as well and see that pass and know what you're trying to do and then execute it is the big thing. But you'd see McManus. McManus has done it for years actually in the Ulster Championship and he's got a few goals off it. So it's been around, it's been around. But yeah, you're you're probably right. We're always learning, we're always changing. Um, especially when when defenses are tend to be packed, you need to come up with a couple of different things because the kick pass isn't always on. So you're trying to create space within little pockets of space up in the forward line. So, yeah, it's definitely something uh, that you can get at because no cornerback is going to let you run out, you know what I mean, on your own. So he's going to come with you. So if you can make that little dart out and then turn on a sixpence and gone, you kind of, you're ahead of him. So, yeah, it's definitely something that's, that's, that I've seen a lot over the last couple of years for sure. Do you think people understand how difficult it is to play on the inside when you're at times totally reliant on the type of ball coming into you, whether it's good kick passes it's been ran in, whatever. Uh, yes and no. I, some people probably think it's it's a handy role, and it look I love it. I love playing in there, but like um, sometimes I can only I'm only going as well as how my team is going out the field. You know that kind of way. Sometimes you rely a lot on on your middle third. Um, you rely on your team having possession, and you rely on your team getting up the field and supporting you. Um, so yeah, it is a tough role at times. Um, it's tough when you're up there on your own at times. But listen, um, I suppose players are trying to get bodies up there now to support the inside lads, and that's what you need. Because if you don't have support runners coming off the shoulder, you just become very predictable, you know. And that's the last thing you want is an inside forward to become predictable. So the more options you have, the better. Yeah. So is it, it's a bit of an unusual one that Tipperary are welcoming Kerry to Thurles as Munster champions, and Kerry will be. I mean, heavy, heavy favourites going into it. But at least, I mean, it's great that Tipperary have something to de- defend going into this game, even if they are, like, big outsiders as far as everyone else is concerned. Yeah. Well, listen, like, you know, at the moment, we're, we're trying to clutch at anything positive, you know, and, like, people ask you, well, you know, how are you going to beat them or what's your mentality? And we're just trying to clutch at anything we have. And being Munster champions is something we probably have to clutch onto. It's something we're not used to, but at the end of the day, we are going into that game as Munster champions, and we're Munster champions for a reason. So we need to take a little bit of confidence from that. Um, again, it's in Turles, which is another little thing we need to cling on to and use it to our advantage if we can at all, even if even if it's just from a logistical point of view that we don't have to travel to Clarny. You know, it's easier on the body. You get an extra hour or two in bed or whatever. You get to eat at home. These little things. Um, but yeah, listen... We're under no illusions how tough this challenge is going to be. Like like I said, we're probably playing the form team in Ireland at the moment. And and it just so happens that we're actually playing some of the worst football we've played. So it's a double-edged sword for us at the moment. But listen, championship takes on a life of its own. And all we want to do is perform because we haven't done it in the league. And all we want is just to put in a performance that's worthy of, of actually competing against a team like Kerry at the moment. And uh, hopefully we can just give ourselves a chance. That's all we want, a slight chance mm. to be in the so game. When, yeah, so when you think back on November 22nd last year, you know, as a fellow tip man watching on, it was magic. But like when you think back on that day, what's the first image that comes to mind being there in the first person? Uh, Monster final, is it? Yeah. Yeah, just... Uh, the best best day of my sporting career comes to mind, um, but I suppose the ov- the overriding feeling from it all probably would be Shane relief because I suppose we tried for so long. There's so much of that team tried to get over the line for a long time, and for large periods it maybe looked like it was never going to come. Um, but then to to finally get the monkey off the back and and get your hands in that cup for the first time in 85 years and um, be a monster champion, it was just literally the best feeling ever because. Not that if we didn't win it, I wouldn't say it all wasn't worth it. But just when you when you know when that final whistle blew, when you knew you'd gotten over the line, all everything just like it was totally worth it. You know, all the hard work, the dedication, the time away from from everything else. It just it was just an incredible feeling, and um, it was weird, right? There was no supporters there, which was obviously a negative, but in some strange way, it made it a little bit more intimate for the players. It was just ourselves in in Parky Cueve and. And obviously, you know, we couldn't celebrate how we would have wanted to celebrate. So we were literally just hanging around Parky Queen for as long as we possibly could, just letting it sink in and, and trying to enjoy it. So, yeah, it was class to be fair. And, now. and like those are memories that whatever happens from now on, you know, they can't be taken away from you. That's, that's the one thing I would say. 
and um, you know you always have that medal in your back pocket now so it's fantastic did, did it feel like the stars were aligning Colin Reardon coming back maybe even the centenary jersey and um, just Cork getting that late goal to knock out Kerry and obviously I'd say there's fewer hang-ups about playing Cork as to, than there would be about yeah. playing Kerry so it just kind of felt from the outside looking in that it was just stars were aligning yeah, when you, when you look back now, you probably would say, yeah, the stars were aligning. But at the time, when you're in the middle of it, you don't literally think about any of that. And that's that's just being honest. Like, when I, I sat down on the Saturday evening, or the Sunday, I think Sunday, and I watched Cork and Kerry, and when I saw the goal win, my first reaction was like, geez, I don't know about this, because we, you know, not that we take Cork for granted, but we've always been very competitive against them. And we knew... I, I kind of felt, right, we've caught now, we might take the eye off the ball here a little bit. Whereas if we had Kerry, I knew mentally we'd be switched on because if you weren't, you know, you'd be in for a, a tough day. But my first reaction was like, oh, no, I don't know how this will go. But then once it sank in, you kind of goes, right, it's ourselves in Cork in a final. Um, we're more than capable of winning this. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, when you look back then, you kind of go, right, Cork did us a favour maybe. Then Colin was home, got to play. The jerseys for me was a banana skin and it's something that um you know I brought to the attention of, of everyone and, and we rectified it straight away. Um, you know, the jerseys could have been a potential, you know, uh, a sideshow and, and we could have lost track of what was really important. But we addressed it anyway at training the first night back and we kind of said to ourselves, Look, Les, there's only one thing important here and that's how we train for the next two weeks and, and that's winning the Munster final and um, yeah, after that, then you kind of think of the jersey and you think of Bloody Sunday and everything that's gone with it. And then, you know, you're allowed to become emotional then. But I was just, I was a little bit apprehensive about becoming too emotional before the match because I felt we might take our eye off the ball on what was really important. And for us as players, it was getting our hands on that medal and trophy, you know, and, and we did that now. So after the Munster final, then you could allow yourself to be a little bit more emotionally attached, I suppose. Yeah, and there was some reception for you when you came home. Cars lined on the street and yeah. people out. I mean, you didn't get through the traditional way, but there's still yeah. it was some reception. Like the hurlers weren't exactly flying it, so it was all yeah. attention on you. Yeah, it was great. Like, and look, I suppose I was captain. Coming home to your home village was just incredible. Um, and like I, you know, Ballyprean is on the Cork border, so you know my mother's a Cork woman. We would have always done our shopping in Mitchestown. Um, a lot of belly preen people would go to school there. You'd go there to do the groceries, the haircuts, whatever, the dentist. So it was the closest town to us. So, you know, getting off the motorway just outside Mitchestown and, and driving through the village was was a little bit sweeter for myself. Um, and just to see everyone there, like we couldn't even get out of our cars. And you really wanted it, you know. You wanted to just get out and, and join the crowd and hug people and stuff. But uh, we said we were better off staying in there. But, yeah, it was fantastic. Like, there was... There was two bonfires at the top of the town. There was a big, massive flag um, that you'd see, you know, in the terraces of the hurling matches and stuff. Um, and there was just hundreds of people. And it was incredible. And again, memories that last forever. So um, very, very, very special for myself to come home to the village and as captain and see all those people out from everywhere, from all over. It was fantastic. Mm. And then just the final thing then about the All-Ireland semi-final. Mayo put up a very big scoreline for a finish, of course. But like, I think I counted what I would have considered... 10 maybe 11 goal scoring opportunities for for you on the day so it kind of feels like there was always a chance for it to go the other way yeah there was there was but to be fair i don't think i don't think we were ever going to win the match if you look back now and if, I, if i'm being totally honest you talk about the stars aligning for the monster final the stars just didn't align for us that day for some reason we got two very early goal chances myself and michael and they fell to the right you know the two right people to be fair and we just didn't take them. You know, if they go in, you know, you have two goals on the board early and you're asking questions and you're putting them under pressure, but at the same time, you can't concede five at the other end, you know. Um, they were the better team on the day by a country mile. Like, w we didn't deserve to get near them. They're, they were so efficient. They hadn't they hadn't won wide in the first half, you know. They were ruthlessly efficient up front. They scored everything. Um, we were the opposite. We had two goal chances. We didn't take them. And that's the difference at the top level. Now, listen, that dressing room was probably the toughest dressing room I, I was ever in, you know, prior to this was this league campaign. But um, the game was over as a contest at halftime. We just had to go out and try and restore a bit of pride in the jersey and maybe win the second half. And thankfully, that's what we've done. But 
look, it wasn't good enough on the day. I've no qualms about saying that. They were by far the better team. But, um, yeah, look, we had to win the second half. It was vital that we did. And we and we done it, thankfully. But, listen, just came up short for a finish. Mm. Okay, well, look, Connor, really appreciate your, your time today. And best of luck for the season. Great, thanks,